Well, um, I didn't, I, I had no prior knowledge. I didn't watch the cartoon, which apparently was wildly successful. Um, I hadn't read the comic book. Um, and it, I was actually shooting a movie at the time in New York called Cadillac Man. And um, I was given the script by my agent and he said, ignore the title. <laughs> and to this, well, God rest his soul, but he always called it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's like, they're Ninja Turtles. I was like, what is that? And he said, it sounds like a horror film, but it's not. It's really sweet. It's really wonderful. And you'll love it. So just don't pay attention to the, to the title. And I read it and I thought, yeah, I'm not going to pay attention to the title. Um, but it was such a sweet story, and I really loved it. And then when I met Steve Barron, um, I liked his take on it. There was, there was only one thing, like in the audition, he really wanted me to, um, there's that moment in the, the um, where are we, we're in my father's store, and I have to like do this high pitched, <laughs> He really wanted that moment. He really wanted it. He wanted it in the room. And as long as I could do that moment in the room, at that job was mine. That was before the symbol crash. Uh huh. Yeah. And it and it was always the moment that I was like, I never would have done this like this. And and I watch it, and it's still like completely inauthentic to me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was nice to meet him and to. To, and from that, I was like, yeah, I'm on. And then I found out more and more about it. The longer I'm attached to this franchise, the more I learn about the backstory of all of it. So, and Robin Williams was the one. He has he had the number one comic book. Their first, I think he had every single one of them. And um, it was funny because Kevin Eastman told me a story about when he was in uh, a comic book store in San Francisco, and Robin used to live there, and um, saw him and went up and said, you know, Mr. Williams, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I'm Kevin Eastman, and he was like, oh, Kevin Eastman, <laughs> and they became friends from that, so. Did Robin have any notes to give you um, when you were, in, after transitioning off the Cadillac Man to get no. part of it? Now, he was just excited. He just said, oh, I'm coming to that premiere. And he did, and he brought his kids, and it was really sweet. But no, he was just thrilled. And he, really what he did is, is because I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And so um, he just made me stop mumbling the title <laughs> and say it out loud. Because I would, people would say, yeah, so you're going to go do another movie? I was like, yeah, I'm doing two but it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and nobody knew what it was. And so after Robin said that's like such a cool thing, and how cool that you're doing that, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Robin Williams says that's a great job. <laughs> so he, Robin carried a lot of weight, a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, can, you would come from a. a, a stunt background prior to working on the flip, correct? Uh, I was a... Not correct. Um, I, I do come from a physical background. I was a martial artist, and that's what allowed me to work on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was actually my very first job out of college, was playing Raphael in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Actually, it wasn't playing Raphael. My first job 
was being talkative foot number two, in which, it, it, some of you already heard this, when all the foot soldiers invade April O'Neil's apartment, and Michelangelo goes, oh, a fellow chucker, eh? And they do the nunchucks back and forth. I'm the guy in black doing the nunchucks against Michelangelo. And so I was originally hired to be one of the foot soldiers, but the action double for Raphael got hurt very early in the film. He broke his nose in one of the scenes. He couldn't wear the turtle outfit anymore. So Pat Johnson, the very famous fight choreographer, choreographer and stunt coordinator, he came to me and he said, Ken, you're the right height, you've got the moves, if you can fit into the turtle costume, you're the new Raphael. So I went to the creature shop. This, I know you didn't ask me this, but I went to the creature shop and I had to like put on all the guys that were playing the turtles, a lot of them were from Hong Kong, so they're about as big around as this bottle right here. And I'm bigger than those guys. So I had to squeeze into like Donatella's legs and Michelangelo's arms, and they put together this Frankenstein turtle costume, and then I just put Raphael's head on, and so from that point forward, I became Raphael. So it was from a martial arts background into the movies that I made my way there. As, as somebody who, as, as a martial artist, your movement is everything. Were those costumes even remotely mobile at all? Did they just look like a massive hand in the neck to do any kind of motion? You've hit it on the head on both of those. They were remotely mobile. <laughs> and yes, they were a pain in the butt to work in. So we were doing really, the, all the guys that were doing the turtles, doing the martial arts for them were world-class martial artists. And whether you're a dancer, or an ice skater, or a martial artist, or play racquetball or anything, imagine trying to do that while wearing a space suit that's three inches thick of foam rubber with a giant shell and a computer mounted underneath the shell back there, and then you gotta do all this stuff. So it was very challenging. You could, just the fact that it was elastic alone, when you tried to raise your leg to kick, it was like a rubber band, it just pulled your leg back down. So we were really fighting a lot of extrinsic load as we tried to do our martial arts. Did you have an issue working with the turtles when you were doing the scenes? Because you as an actor, you have to, you know, get their emotion and it feeds back and shows up on screen. Was it tough for you to make that adjustment for one of the extra movie like this? Um, well, if you had a turtle there, it was easy um, because they were so expressive and they were so lovely. The problem was that you didn't have them there all the time because there was always something, because it's brand new technology, there was always something breaking down. It was also really hard for the actors to stay in those suits. It was just wildly uncomfortable, very difficult to breathe. We're in a soundstage that, even though it's air-conditioned, it's really hot. We're shooting in North Carolina, and it's super humid. And so uh, there were many times that I was acting to a paper plate on a seat stand with a smiley face on it or nothing. And I had to just remind myself, and there were, I think initially I was like a little like, come on, like, this isn't fair. What? You're starring in a movie, shut the hell up, nobody cares. Like, wow, 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 we don't care. And so, and I'm pretty good at, you know, you have your moments where it's like, I'm hot and I'm tired and it's, there's a paper plate. This is not how it's supposed to go. <laughs> and so you sort of go, okay, whine for a minute and now stop. And um, I'm pretty good at, you know, kind of readjusting my head. And I went, okay, so when you're little and you're me, pretend and you're out back and you're, by the garbage cans, but you're pretending that, you know, there's dinosaurs over there, you just make pretend. It's like, you don't, it doesn't matter if there's an actual turtle there. Like, use your imagination. Shut up, nobody cares. So, once I really got good with that, I was like, yeah, make pretend. Yeah, how do you think they did Star Wars? None of that's there. I can do that. I can do that better than anyone. Literally, you know. And then I was fine. But it was always better if there was a turtle. Did the reception of the film and the film's fan base surprise you guys? Completely. No. <laughs> no, because as somebody who was part of the comic book world, somebody who was part of the comic book world a little bit, I kind of knew what was there. Now, did I know it was going to be the biggest independent film of all time up to that date? Absolutely not. But there was just something about it. I came from a martial arts background and comic book background, so I knew that there was something there. 
I don't want to say I knew it was going to be what it became and that we would be sitting here talking 25 years later, but there was, you knew something was happening. Well, yes and no. I mean, yeah, but it's, there's a wonderful uh, documentary that they just did um, that I uh, actually was asked to, you know, talk in it and, and then I said, well, will you send it to me? And and they sent it to me and I watched it and I was fascinated. There was so much that I didn't know about the whole franchise, about the evolution and, and specifically about when they made this movie. They didn't have a lot of money. Um, they, it came out much darker than anyone anticipated and they really thought, holy crap, we're in trouble. What kid is going to want to see this movie? And I think it was the day before or the day of, like they, they were in serious, we are going down, we are about to go down in flames. Ouch, this is going to hurt. And because they had also just gone to a screening. And you know, when you go to a screening and it's just people in the industry, it's just the most cynical group of people. <laughs> you know, they will suck the joy out of a room. And yeah, they will, and because they're all afraid, because there's a lot of money on the line, and there's a lot of, you know, that's just the industry. And um, so they were really nervous. And then the, sh the movie was opening, and they drove past, you know, whatever the closest theater was, and they couldn't believe it. There was a line out the door and around the block, and it was just, they they just like, you know, hands to their, their, their hearts, and, and they thought we might actually survive this, and then they had no idea. Past that, it was like, wow, it was just a phenomenon. The guys that actually, for those of you who don't know, it was produced by Golden Harvest, which produced Jackie Chan movies and Bruce Lee movies way back before when. So it was a co-production between a Hong Kong-based company and then New Line Cinema, based here in America, which had success with Nightmare on Elm Street and all that, and that's how they kind of made their, their name. And originally, when they were gonna do Ninja Turtles, they were gonna do it for like two million bucks, and they were gonna make these crappy rubber suits, and just, I mean, it was literally, they were gonna make a kung fu movie out of it in China. And then they came up with another idea, they thought for a while about putting Chevy Chase in a suit where you could see his face and he'd be a turtle and other comedians and finally through enough talk, yeah, through enough talk and stuff, they ended up with what they ended up with, which hopefully was the best thing they could have done. And then suddenly made the free makeup, so everybody was yeah. happy. <laughs> um, if you guys have questions, just throw your hands up because I, I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to ask their questions as well. Um, so first movie success. Did, did you have a, a deal? In, did you have a deal in place for sequels? I did. The contract? I did. And then they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Um, you know, we just had. Uh, there were. Uh, the perfect example is you know there was a, a stuntman with a broken nose, who it's awesome because Ken got a you know a more featured part. And, um, but I'm pretty sure the guy was sent home with his broken nose without any medical oh, care. Did he? Because yeah. there were guys who were just sent back home, who got injured, and, and it was not necessarily the best. Judith was probably the biggest advocate for the turtle performers. She was so empathetic and caring and really like uh, went to the producers and sort of stood up for the turtles and said, these guys need more rest and they need to be better taken care of, and which was great. Also coming out from the other side, coming out from a martial arts point of view and being involved with stunt fighting and all that kind of stuff, every once in a while, you know, somebody gets tagged. It's just kind of the way it, right. it happens. And um, so when guys, especially guys from Hong Kong, I mean, when right. guys They had Kong, no union protection. Yeah, those line. guys just get crushed. Like I got, I actually got invited to go to Hong Kong after this movie to start doing martial arts movies there. And I went to David Chan, the producer of Ninja Turtles, who was from Hong Kong, and I said, hey, I got this offer to go to Hong Kong with the stunt guys and start working over there. Should I go? And he was like, no, don't go, unless they pay you a million dollars. 
And I was like, why? He goes, because you're going to go over there, you're going to get hurt, and they're going to put you out on the street and close the gate, and they'll act like they never heard of you again. Right. So I, so I walked away from that. And to this day, I kind of regret that, actually. <laughs> but I walked away based on the fact that that's what those guys are used to. So, when, so to be honest, when that guy broke his nose, it was just another day at the office. He just couldn't wear his mask at the time. But, right. you know, well, and, you know, it's also, I'm sure, within the, you know, stunt people and stuff, it's like they're, they're brawny people. Um, like nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody you know, wants to right get hurt. Back. Nobody wants to get hurt. And there were also, there were a few other things. We have really, really long days, and there were things that going forward, I thought, we need to correct this. And they were like, mm, no, you're, you've got a little too much of a, point of view about this and we're just going to replace you. <laughs> Plus they were going to have to pay me a lot more money and they thought, well, hey, we could two birds, one stone. So that's what happened. I've, I've it's all good. <laughs> no, no hard feelings. So even though Judith wasn't there, your role actually increased into the actual, you know, the on-camera performer for the majority. Did you also do fight doubling along with her? because of the rigors of the shoot, did you have a fight double at that point or two? Yeah, what's, what Devin's talking about is there's four people that play every turtle in the movie. There's an actor who wears a suit that has 27 electronic motors that operate in the eyes and the lips and all that. Just off camera is a puppeteer from the Henson Group, a lot of the guys that do the Muppets, Mr. Snuffleupagus, Marty, who was Donatello, was Mr. Snuffleupagus. Well, they had an incredible remote control system in front of them, and from off camera, they would control the eyes and the mouth and all that kind of stuff. Then the third person was a stunt person who dressed in a Ninja Turtle suit that didn't have any electronics in it so they could get beat up and fall down and not destroy a quarter million dollar outfit. And then once the movie was finished, somebody like Corey Feldman, Robbie Riss, Brian Tochi, those guys would come in at the end and do ADR and add the voice. So there were four guys. In the first movie, in addition to being talkative foot number two, I was the stunt double for Raphael, so I became his action double. And while Judith was working on first set, first unit, doing all the main acting and all that, I was with second unit doing all the fight scenes for Raphael. In the second movie, what happened was Josh Pace, who played Raphael, went through a similar situation that Judith did and did not end up coming back to the movie. So I auditioned, I had to audition like 75 other guys, and I moved into the actor Role with all the servos and the motors. And they the made you audition? Yeah, they were, uh, yeah, kind of. Wow. <laughs> it's a whole story. I had to audition on a video. I was in North Carolina. They were in Los Angeles. They told me to audition myself on videotape. Did you so just give them a tape of the first movie? Like, Here's my audition. <laughs> the, guy said, the guy said, I want you to act like Raphael from the first, this is David Chan. He says, act like Raphael from the first movie and send the videotape to us. We have to have it on Monday morning, first thing. I said, okay, great. So my buddy got a VHS camera that tells when this was. Right. I went out in the front yard, I put on a green polo shirt because it was the most <laughs> turtle-like thing I had. And I acted like Raphael. I was like, yo, dude, what's, and I just did all this stuff. And then I went to the, uh, I called FedEx and I was like, hey, I need to get this there on Monday morning. And they're like, oh, it's Memorial Day. We don't deliver. And I'm like, but this is my chance. If I don't get it there, I'm not going to get the chance. So I drove to the Greensboro Airport in North Carolina, went to Delta Airlines, and I said, I have to get this videotape to a desk in Los Angeles, California by Monday morning. Can you do it? And they said, yes, but it'll cost you $185. And I was like, okay. So I paid wow. for it. $87. Yeah. $87. The videotape. $5,000. The videotape got there. I called David Chan. I said, did you get it? Did you get it? He goes, oh, we got it. Thanks very much. But we're going to audition about 75 other guys out here for the part. And I was like, all right. Well, at least I'll be the stunt double. So I had that to fall back on. And then about a week later, I get a call from David Chan. He says, Ken, if you got a passport, we need you to fly to London tomorrow. You're the new Raphael, and you got to go get your suit made. And I was like, Aah! so I found myself on a plane. It was worth 185 bucks. It was totally worth it because <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, and uh, I got a plaster cast, body, you know, made on my body by five Cockney English guys. So it was a really great experience. <laughs> Questions, audience, please. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Yeah, right here. Uh, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to put on the suit all together. It's basically like dressing up in a space suit with multiple pieces, pants, boots, arms, shoulders, gloves, and then it's all held together by these leather things that, excuse me, 
were literally laced up every time. Each one of us as a turtle had a what we called a dresser or a handler. So constantly, once we were on the set, you always had somebody with you. Mike Raphael had somebody, Mikey had somebody, Donnie had somebody, and they had to build us these special chairs because you can't sit on a, with a shell, you can't sit on a regular chair. So they built us these things that looked like sawhorses, and you could sit on a sawhorse, and they'd give you juice boxes, and you could just sit there. So it, it took about a half hour, 40 minutes to get into it, and you were covered in talcum powder. How long did it take you to get it? Three and a half minutes. <laughs> but you just had a handler helping you with your other wardrobe. Yeah, no, I didn't have a handler. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, no, my wardrobe was, was there was a, an idea behind it where it had lots of layers. And as the movie went on, I'd lose layers after layers after layers until we were just down to, I think, the skirt. Tank the top. Tank top. Skirt in the tank top. April's tank top at the farmhouse. But are there any kids in the room? No. Um, there was a, a whole, I can say in this room. Um, it's a safe space. It's a safe space. No, it all stays in here. Okay. Um, no, um, I, I was shooting and uh, Steve Barron's girlfriend um, had some MTV talk show, and I forget the name of it. And uh, when I had gotten down to the tank top, I, of course, didn't have a bra on. And so the, she decided that maybe I should wear band-aids on my nipples. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. That just seems painful and odd. And um, so there was a long conversation that day. So that, yeah, that would be my only wardrobe issue that I had, that and my April suit. My jumpsuit. As Raphael, I actually did put band aids on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it. They go on easy. Um, not so much. Um, so much. I would be remiss if I did not ask about shooting the ninja rap piece with Vanilla Ice. This is a point where Robin Van Winkle, as we know him here locally, um, <laughs> blowing up. So just. It, it still seemed like an insane piece just had dropped in the middle of the flip. How long did it take you to get the choreography down for it? And was, was that you on screen doing even better? A little background information. They were trying to do a tie-in with a musical artist because they knew whatever they put in the movie, since this first one was so successful, they knew that in Secret of the Use, something would go off uh, if it was associated with the film. So the first artist that was suggested that was supposed to be in the movie was Wilson Phillips. They were gonna be performing in the nightclub for the Ninja Turtles. However, that, that immediate protest came out and said there's not a good match there between Wilson Phillips and the Turtles. So I believe Vanilla Ice, Rob Van Winkle, was on the same label, if I'm not mistaken. So somehow Vanilla Ice got inserted. Um, Vanilla Ice celebrated his 21st or 22nd birthday on the set. And we, as again, as Judith has pointed out so many times, as the turtles, we it, the working conditions were very, very difficult. Twelve hours a day in a suit like At those guys are wearing, hours yeah, a day. very oxygen tanks, the whole thing. So we didn't, we felt oppressed as turtle performers all the time, <laughs> and the producers, and, and rightly so, yeah. And the producers didn't really care. It was, I mean, it was, it was kind of like, hey, you're in a mask, we can replace you, no problem. Which is interesting. I'll tell you the Barbara Walters story later if we have time. And that cost the producers a lot of money because they thought they could replace us and they couldn't. Um, so they were just like, oh, we don't care, we don't care. So it was very hard for us. Well, then Vanilla Ice shows up on set, and Vanilla Ice gets a trailer and catered food, and he gets his whole entourage out there. And I mean, they're treating him like royalty, and we're over there like, we're the turtles, what's going on? So there was a lot of animosity, really, between you. We didn't, not as a man, we didn't really know him. But he celebrated his birthday, they threw a whole party for him, and we couldn't even get air conditioning. So that kind of stuff. Yeah. So then we go to do this performance, and we're doing the nightclub scene, and Doing martial arts or dancing in that suit is very difficult. And when you shoot choreography, which we had to work with a choreographer for a couple weeks before, and we're learning all the moves and everything. So we did spend some time learning it. When you're doing that stuff in a suit, it is physically exhausting because inside the turtle mouth, the, the tongue and all that sits in front of your face. 
So all your carbon dioxide gets caught right there. So within just a couple of minutes, you kind of feel like you just want to go to sleep all the time. And then they have to wake you up to do the scene, and you want to go back to sleep again. So we're dancing. Well, we get into the song, right? go ninja, go ninja. And Vanilla Ice can't remember the words to his own song like 15 times. Cut, cut. He stops. He's getting all upset. We're getting up. We spent so long on that thing doing it. Not to mention the night before was one of the stunt guys' uh, birthday parties, and we had a good time till late at night. <laughs> so I was not feeling too good during that dance scene to begin with. But a couple of goodies powders later and everything, we were all good to go. Wow. Hollywood <laughs> is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> we'll, we'll trade stories about Robbie later. Than that, but, <laughs> man, um, there's, I mean, when you see guys like this who do uh, awesome do guys awesome. like that. Yeah, let's awesome. give those guys a hand. Come up here. Awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I would have called you up a long time ago, but I'm not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not in charge. You're right. <laughs> Joe Show, Morris. Hi, babies. <laughs> go, ninja. go, Ninja. Go, uh, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Fall back. Come forward. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is somebody who's had, who's made that mistake. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you kids, when you're in a turtle suit, all you can see is if you put your fist in front of your eye and make a tiny little thing, you have such tiny little tunnel vision that you really have to be like, oh, I'm talking to you, I'm talking, but I mean, you can't see anything. So everything is choreography at that point because it's not just yeah. knowing where your marks are, it's feeling where your marks are and hoping yeah. that you're somewhat right. Yeah, it's what you it's have to It's an actor's nightmare, to <laughs> like literally. Yeah, it's very tough. You have to become, you have to be so practiced at it that it becomes intuitive. And then you can kind of start to move. And the people you work with have to, you all have to be in tune to kind of make it work. Was there any point when you were working on, on, on the film where it, was, it wasn't the fault of anybody in the suit, but it was just something that you just could not get the blocking right and it seemed like it took forever to just get the set of action in? Um, that seems to happen on every movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are times where we would have something called that I call MTB, Major Turtle Breakdown, and um, yeah. you try, yeah, you'd be trying to shoot something, and like part of the face would, you know, would, they look like they had Bell's palsy, and part of it would work, and part wouldn't work, and or something, or somebody would, you know, be in a little bit of trouble and need to like just breathe for a while, and so yeah, there were times that that happened. And you just kept going, you know, take a little break. Have you guys had an opportunity to see the Michael Bay movie? Yeah. I have not, but I'm in the second one. <laughs> I am, yeah. All right, June, phones June off, 3rd. phones off, phones off. <laughs> dish. <laughs> uh, well, I, okay, there's not a lot to dish about um, because I have to say, I've worked with Michael Bay before. So I don't, I have a good relationship with him. And and quite frankly, he wasn't around at all. I was sort of disappointed because I hadn't seen him in a while and it would have been nice to just catch up. Um, the people who are producing that film were lovely um, and extremely accommodating. The turtles were cool. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about the Anticlimactic I know, I'm Come sorry, on. Pollyanna, right here, but... Tell us about Michael Bay's pack implants or something. There you go. No, <laughs> his are real. Um, they, they, uh... I, here's the thing. I'm just glad that the franchise lives on. And I don't really care in what iteration. It's sort of like, I, people are working. I like that. I've been doing this business for a long time. I see a lot of people who aren't working, who should be working, who are really talented. So the fact that it continues to live and that people are doing well with it and having success, I'm like rock on. I'm really live and let live. I think if you're not that way, it's a really uncomfortable journey and more good stuff doesn't make its way to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Anything that perpetuates the franchise overall is good for us. If you just look at it from like a law of attraction point of view, I know that every time a commercial runs 
for a new Michael Bay Ninja Turtle film, that there are dozens, if not hundreds or more people around the world that turn to their friends and go, hey, I met Raphael once, or I know Raphael. So it only perpetuates our energy and just being a big part of it, so it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Outside of this weekend here in Richardson, Texas, what's the coolest thing that this experience, either travel, the show, just the whole, the whole experience has taken you to? Well, I have to say that shooting the new movie was such fun um, because we shot in Times Square. And for anyone who's been to Times Square, it's crazy. It's cars and people and fire trucks and police cars and giant jumbotrons and we're shooting in it. And, and so before I went to, and you know, that's where I got started. That's where I got this job. I was living literally right off of Times Square. I'm sitting in Times Square shooting and I'm looking over at my agent's office who, I was in that building when I got this job and now I'm here 25 years later. I mean, that's surreal. Um, but it was funny because I've, I've been in the makeup trailer and they're like, you have to sign your non-disclosure agreement before you get to the set. And because I wasn't allowed to talk about it, I'm not allowed to have my camera on set, blah, 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 blah. I sign it, I go to set, the, <laughs> you're in Times Square. Even though we're cordoned off, there were probably 10 paparazzi photographers there. Just dip, 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 dip. In the, within 10 minutes, there's pictures on the internet. And I was like, you can take pictures, but I cannot. <laughs> That's not right. But just being able to be in Times Square and shoot, is a, a very, a, to any film that can get the permits and the permission and the space to do that, it's, it's a unique, it's sort of like shooting at the Eiffel Tower or shooting you know, at an iconic place that's internationally known. So that was really, really cool. But there's been a lot of them. I've, I've been really fortunate. Is there a fan experience that you've had, Ken, that just like stands out in your mind over the last uh, couple of decades? A fan experience in particular. Mm. I mean, other than just the wonderful assortment of people I meet at the events, I don't think there's a particular fan experience. I have my own personal experiences that Ninja Turtles were sort of represented high, you know, apotheosis moments in my life. Uh, for me, just doing the movies. I wanted to be an action hero in the movies from the time I was 12 years old on. I wanted to be Jackie Chan, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all that stuff. So I was all about martial arts and ninja movies and this and that. And I was growing up in North Carolina and I was destined for LA. And God helps those who help themselves. They built a movie studio three hours from my house and decided to shoot a Ninja Turtle movie there. So I just had to get it. The way I, the way I got into that movie was I was trying to break into the movie studio literally trying to break in because I knew that somehow my dreams were on the other side of that wall. So I went and got myself a Domino's pizza delivery uniform and a couple of Domino's pizza boxes. And I drove up, this was before 9-11, so security was not quite what it is today. No. I, drove, I drove up to the security gate of this movie studio in Wilmington, North Carolina, not knowing what was going on on the other side. And I said to the guard, yeah, I got a delivery for the production team. And he looked at this clipboard and he looked at me and then he raised up the gate and he goes, all right, drive on back to the back lot. They're all back there. So I drove on by, I was like, my heart was beating. I got on, I was driving around the movie set. I parked in the back lot, the city street of Wilmington, um, where we ended up shooting uh, Ninja Turtles. I parked my car, I took off my Domino's uniform, I put on my jeans jacket. That tells you how long ago this was. And I walked in the back and they were shooting a movie and it was a car chase and a gunfight with a movie starring Shadow Stevens. <laughs> the <old movie. laughs> But I, but I just settled in for like three or four hours. There's like 60, 100 people on a movie set. So I just kind of hid in the back and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I was, well, eventually I met the people that were in charge of casting the extras. They found out I was into martial arts. They told me about this movie coming called Ninja Turtles. I eventually auditioned, became the foot, and then the soldier, and on and on and on and on. So just becoming a turtle and being on the set was a dream, of, it was my dream. It was getting my SAG card, it was everything I needed to pursue my career. Um, so for me, overall, that was just the greatest thing. But during the process, when I got that plane to fly to London, they basically stood in the Henson Creature Shop, and they strung me up 
put my arms out to the side like this, and they started put, making a body cast in order to make the Ninja Turtle costume. And so I was standing like right where David Bowie had stood to get his outfit made for Labyrinth, and parts of it were right there on the wall. And I was just like, oh my god, just like you looking at your agent's office. I was like, it's happening, it's happening. Oh yeah, more warm plaster, more warm plaster. It's happening. <laughs> so it was great, it was lovely. I, I think my most surreal fan experience was, I was in, it was probably about seven years ago, six or seven years ago, and I was in South Africa, and I was shooting there, and um, one day I went and took a tour through Soweto, and was in a restaurant, that was this amazing restaurant that there was like a table this long and it was filled with hot pots or hot plates with pots on top and you had no idea what was in those pots and you just took a plate and you just fill it up and it was delicious and it was you know completely I'm literally it took 24 hours to get there I'm on the other side of the world and I'm filling up my plate and this little girl comes up to me and says oh are you the mother in Halloween Town? It was like, what, what, what? <laughs> and she's like, I know you. You're in Halloween Town. And so it was just insane. It was <laughs> like, yeah, I am. Wow. Yeah, the Disney Channel. That's not even a Ninja Turtle experience. I was waiting for you to tie it in. That's pretty good. All right, wait, I got one of those. I was in, <laughs> I was in a movie called Showdown with Billy Blanks from Tybo fame. And basically, Showdown is a ripoff of Karate Kid, but it was still good. And um, it was it played in theaters. Yeah, this was probably one of the most played shows on cable ever in the mid '90s. So much so that it was the one time in my life that I could walk down the street in L.A. and people would stop their cars and go, "Hey!" And my name was Ken in the movie too, because the writers apparently thought I couldn't know when to say my lines unless I had the same name and character. And so one day I go to Georgia to see my brother get married. And I'm in Georgia, and it's my brother's wedding, so I'm not gonna lie, I was partying until the wee hours. The next day, my aunt and uncle were giving me a ride to the airport, and I'm, my hair's standing up, I'm bleary-eyed, we stop at a Waffle House by the side of the freeway, and I go, and we're eating, and I go to the bathroom, and I'm just like, oh God, I feel terrible, I need to go. I come walking out, and there's like a seven, eight-year-old kid standing in front of the men's room, and he goes, your name's Ken, isn't it? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're in Showdown. And I was like, Get out of here, kid, you bother me. <laughs> but it was just out of nowhere, coming out of a bathroom in Georgia. That stuff always strikes me as like, wow, how, good eye, kid, good eye. It is a blast having you both here. Thank you very much for all of your phenomenal work over the years. Ken, it, it's been great getting to see you again. We like, traded emails a couple of years ago trying to get you involved with John but I was finally actually able to make it work. Thank you so much for being so generous. Oh, our at, at my advertiser. I know you're at Judith Hogan Prescott, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Woo! Let's hear it for our turtles. Our turtles. We can get a little like, yeah. Yeah, go, go ninja. ninja. Go, go ninja. Go, 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 go. go, go, go. Yeah. That's the actual dance move right there. Good job.